Hello everybody, my name is Katie. I'm a fifth year teacher in the state of Florida. This year I taught third grade for the first time and previously I taught first grade for four years and I'm so glad you're here for today's video. Today's video has been requested, kind of, in a way, by a lot of people. Um, I get a lot of questions about what was it like or do you have any advice? I am moving up in grades. So if you're new here to my channel, like just a little background information, I taught in Alabama. I taught first grade for three years at the same school, moved to Florida, taught first grade last year at a different school, and then I changed schools and now I'm in third grade for my fifth year of teaching. So this past year, I've made the move up from first grade to third grade. And now that I've gotten to the end of my first year teaching third grade, I now feel like I am qualified to give some tips and some advice for what it's like to move up in grade levels in a classroom. I will say I'm still not an expert at um, third grade. I don't feel like I'm an expert at all. But then again, I also don't feel like I was a first grade expert either. Um, just keep in mind that I had four years of first grade under my belt and only one year of third grade. So there are still some things that I'm working on and learning throughout. But these are some tips that if you were like, oh my goodness, I'm going from a little grade to an upper grade, what do I need to do? Um, I feel like these can kind of be transferred between any grade, like if you're going from kindergarten to fourth, or if you're going from first grade to fifth, or any kind of jump that takes you kind of like from primary area up into like some of those upper grades. I have all of my tips typed up on my computer. If you watch any videos with me, you know the drill when I'm sitting in my um, bedroom with my lovely front lit window over here because it gives me the best lighting for filming. Um, I really do need to film another sit down and like chat and tip video in my classroom. It's been a while since I filmed one like sitting at my classroom desk, but you guys see that, that view plenty in vlogs. And it's just now that I like share an office space with more teachers. It's noisier in my classroom in the afternoon, which is totally fine and totally worth it. Um, my first two years, I had like a classroom all to myself and it wasn't really connected to anybody. And this year I'm like connected to four different places. So we're always like talking, chatting, goofing off, um, all the things in the afternoon. So I just can't really sit down and film in the afternoon as much as I could before. Um, so you're just getting a tip video from my bedroom, but it's fine because at least the lighting's great. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started because now I'm rambling. Um, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tips for you guys. This is the number eight, eight tips. Um, so hopefully these are helpful. The first one is still be explicit in everything you do, especially directions. It's very easy when you go from like little grades, like first grade, I knew I had to give everything step by step for those first graders. They're six years old. Like I need to lay it all out there. And you still need to do that in upper grades. And this was something that thankfully I kind of knew going into it. Like you're prepared to do that because you taught younger grades. Like because I taught first grade, I already kind of was like very explicit at the beginning. But I would say like definitely would recommend when you're giving directions, give it step by step, just like you would for your primary kids. Do the same thing for intermediate because then there's no wiggle room if they're not following the expectations or the directions that you set. So that's my first tip is be explicit in everything that you do, just like you would with younger grades. Don't change anything there. Um, my second tip is to know your new standards. And I would say, look at this prior to looking at curriculum. Like as soon as you know that you're changing grades, you can get online onto a website and pull up all the standards for that grade level. Do that. My friend Autumn, who teaches in Alabama, and she used to teach in Florida. She made like a document of all of the best standards that she taught in Florida and she shared it with me. So I did the same thing she did where I made like my own little document. Let me see if I could pull it up. Best standards. My own little cheat sheet per se, where I looked at all the standards and made my own table to where it was like a quick reference because sometimes those standards documents, and if you teach in Florida, that best standards document, it's great because it gives you so much information, but it's also like 90 pages. And I'm like, I can't pull up 90 pages every time I want to see what I'm teaching in third grade. So this was definitely worth my while. I like sorted it all by skill and by branch and highlighted keywords. And I have used this as a reference multiple times throughout the year. Um, it's great for me to see in this is for math and reading and it's about seven pages versus like 90 for reading, 90, 90 for math. So if I was ever like, ah, what am I teaching in third grade? I have that quick, quick cheat sheet 
um, that I can go look at. But also I would recommend this because you never know if your curriculum is going to cover your standards in a thorough and detailed way. So you need to be prepared to know what standards you're teaching your kiddos before you jump into looking at a curriculum. Plus, if you're staying within the same district, the good news is hopefully your curriculum may have some consistency. Like I taught Go Math in first grade and then I just switched to third grade Go Math. So I really didn't need to pour over the curriculum very much. I needed to look at the standards and say, this is the math that I'm teaching in third grade, if that makes sense. Um, so that's tip number two. Tip number three is a little more specific to reading. Um, if you are a primary teacher and you're moving up to intermediate grades at all, just know that your reading small groups are going to look different and give yourself grace there. I was very systematic phonics small groups my last three years of teaching um, in first grade or so. My first year, you know, you're just kind of figuring it out. And it was prior to a lot of information about science of reading where that had been like super public knowledge. So I'd say my second, third, and fourth year, I was very like, I see every group every day and I give them the phonics that they need. We do phonemic awareness, we do blending, we do this. We practice it in a text, we write it. Like I knew what I did every day and this year has looked very different and I've had to give myself a lot of grace. Um, and it's an area that I definitely wanna grow in is being able to pull small groups, but they're gonna be more skill-based. And I don't have any tips for skill-based small groups because like I said, that's an area that I wanna grow next year, but I had to learn to give myself grace that my small groups may not look exactly like they did in first grade where it was very regimented and you rotated here and I wanted it. It just didn't look like that in third grade and that's okay. So things are gonna look different. Um, and that's something to ask your teammates about. Go ahead and start to put your feelers out with people that you're working with. Say, hey, what does a small group look like in your classroom? And ask for advice. Definitely, that's what I would say. Um, tip number four, your students can and want to do more to help. So leverage class jobs and helpers. In first grade, and I still am working on releasing control. I'm a very type A control freak kind of person. In first grade, there were a lot of jobs that I just did not let my students do. My first graders did not touch the pencil sharpener because I did not want it to break. And just, you know, stuff like that. I didn't want them putting things in mailboxes, like flyers that were to go home that week. Things like that. Um, I changed the calendar. I changed the special area rotations. I did a lot of those things. Well, my third graders are way more eager to help with some of those things. And so at the beginning of the year, when I realized that I made a list of things like, these are things you can help with. So in the afternoon, if you want to do these things, you can. Um, they're more capable when they're older, which is nice. Um, I've never been like a classroom job person because it's just too much for me to manage. I feel like I'm trying to manage them on top of everything else that I'm doing. So classroom helpers has worked for me. I still have like a helper of the day, but a lot of my kids, like the same few kids change my calendar in the afternoons. The same few change the specials because they like to help in that way. Um, so I've definitely utilized them more because they're older to help with things. Even like cutting things out. If we have an activity for like a day coming up, I can let them cut things out. Like, and that's kind of nice. So, um, just leverage that how you wish. And if you do have class jobs in your younger grade and you're moving up to an older grade, congratulations, because it's probably gonna go a whole lot smoother. <laughs> um, the next one, <laughs> let your yes be yes and your no be no. Be decisive. They know more about school, but you're in charge. This was something that was totally new to me when I got to third grade, because in first grade, they've really only been in kindergarten. So they've had one year of school experience, not a whole lot of school experience. So they just run the plays as, as you play them, right? Third graders have had kindergarten, first and second grade. And so they know how school works and they will ask you a lot of questions and try to make it look the way that they want it to look, which is not bad necessarily, but like, let your yes be yes and your no be no. You decide what goes in the classroom. Your third grade classroom is not their second grade classroom. It's not their first grade. It's not their kindergarten. You don't have to do the same things that they did in those grades. For example, during dismissal, in kindergarten, they let us draw when we were waiting for our parents. Or in second grade, they let us draw. And that's great, but that's not me. You're in third grade, you're in my classroom now, and we watch this when we wait for dismissal. Or we do this when we wait for dismissal. Or like, oh, well, I did this for my free choice center when I was in second grade. Can we add that to one of our options? You have the right to say no, okay? Like, <laughs> you can say no. It's your classroom. You don't have to add something because they suggest it. And that would be my next tip. Um, because their, like, school knowledge is 
something that shocked me. It was like way different. And I was like, oh my gosh, these kids know how school works, but they don't know how your classroom works. Like they don't know how Miss Allen's classroom works. They just know how school works. So I'm teaching them how my classroom works. Does that make sense? It was just something I wasn't expecting moving up in grades. So <laughs> um, next one is hold high expectations for work and work quality, which is something I hope to do better next year. Um, first grade, I let a lot of things go. I let a lot of things go because I'm like, I know they're little. It's not always going to be perfect. By third grade, start to hold them to a higher expectation for what you want their work to look like and do that from the beginning, from the get-go for upper grades. And I wish I had done that a little bit better. Like, no, this is messy. You, this doesn't even look like a number. Make it look like a number and then try again. You know what I mean? Like, if you do that at the beginning of the year, it's going to be easier than at the end of the year. Um, but they know better. They know better because they're older. So hold them to a high expectation for work quality. Um, next tip is your knowledge of foundational skills will serve you well. Um, it's going to help with kids who need more intervention and all of your knowledge that you have on phonics and math. What's it called? Oh my gosh. What's it called? It's not math fluency. What am I trying to think of? Number sense, number sense, that's it. Has it been that long? Oh my goodness. Everything you know about like phonics foundations, number sense that you've taught in younger grades is going to serve you well. It's gonna help you to give intervention to kids who are older and who need help and are still struggling. And um, it's also gonna give you a good foundation of like the skills that they already have to build on, if that makes sense. Um, so don't think that everything you know is just like thrown out the window. Things come back, you still use the stuff that you did when you were younger. I haven't gotten rid of any of my first grade materials. First off, because you never know when you're going to switch grades again. Second, I can pull out something to work on with a student if I need to, right? So it's still there. Um, and then a lot of my like theme stuff, I just revamp to use for third grade. Some of the activities are still fine for third grade. And some of them, I just find something that's a little, has a little more educational rigor, if that makes sense. And then my last tip and I know this has been kind of fast and furious and furious. I'm checking like the timestamp and I've only been filming for like 13 minutes, but this, these are all the tips I have. So this is the last one. Um, don't be shocked when they don't know things that you think they should because you taught the skill in lower grades and I put like a laughing face here. Um, don't be shocked. Don't be shocked. They're kids. So like how many times have I stood up in third grade and taught something that I know I taught to first graders the last four years of my life and my third graders are looking at me like, what? <laughs> I've never heard this before. Don't be shocked. It's okay. Go back over it again. Um, teach it again. Teach it again. And sometimes I will say like, hey guys, I know you learned this when you were younger. I used to teach first grade. I taught this to first graders. Like, come on, pick up the pace, jog their memory. It'll be okay. Um, but it's, it's nice because they can't say like, oh, well, we've never learned this before. Like, yes, you have. I know you have because I know what standards are. Um, and I know what you've been taught, but don't be shocked because there's going to be things that they're like, they've forgotten, they've slept, it's been summer, all of those fun things. So that is all of the tips that I have for you guys. Um, other, everything else I feel like is very specific. Oh, I guess another one is your classroom management. Just adjust it for your grade level. You don't always have to redo the whole thing. Um, I use some of the same things. I use my sticker store with first grade. I use it with third grade. Um, but yeah. Other than that, that's like all the tips that I have for you guys. It was, it's eight good ones. It's kind of like mindsets that were different when I moved up a grade. If you've moved up a grade and have something that helps you, please comment below because I would love to have just like a list of things that were helpful for you when you moved up grades. Um, I guess the last tip, which I would say for any teacher is ask your teammates, ask your teammates any questions that you have. You're in a new grade level. You're allowed to ask questions. You're a teacher. You're allowed to ask questions. Um, but yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. But those are like my biggest tips. So now if anybody's like, hey, I'm moving up grades. Any advice? This is the video I will be sending to them because this is like my my big eight, ten, nine, however many I added in there. Um, but I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, comment below again if you have any tips for moving up grades. And just comment what grade you're teaching because I always think that's interesting to see what you guys are teaching. Give the video a thumbs up and click on subscribe if you'd like to join. I post teaching tip videos, vlogs, all kinds of things, and I'd love to have you join. As always, I will see you guys in the next one.